We'll look at um, exercise number three for, uh, from the set of uh, week, week four exercises. Uh, and we are using the data set ICU-original CVS.csv that you can find in Canvas folder. Okay, these are, uh, uh, this data comes from uh, patients that were admitted to ICU and we'll be interested in um, modeling the, the discharge status STA. Uh, Alive or, alive or deceased. So the question number three asks us to fit a model for the, for the probability of not surviving to ICU. So we want to fit a logistic regression using a fractional polynomial for the variable systolic. And then to plot the fractional polynomial and compare it with the linear uh, uh, association. So We'll open Stata, we're going to import the data. We've done this before, so I'll assume that you know how to do this. So I'll import the data and um, I'll, I'll fit uh, the fractional polynomials of dimension two. And the idea is that I want to compare with the fractional polynomials of dimension one and also with the linear model, okay? So I'll use the command um, fractional polynom polynomials that you find in the linear models. Again, this is uh, a bit strange given that uh, we want to run a logistic regression, but this is where the fractional polynomial command is in the menus. So I'm going to select fractional polynomial regression. Um, and I'm going to say that I want a fractional polynomial for the variable Cs. And the command that I want to run is a logistic regression for the variable uh, STA with C's systolic variable um, between the less and more than symbols. And state is going to fit um, uh, a fractional polynomial of degree two. At, in, the same, in, the, in the same output, we're going to see the result for uh, uh, dimension, dimension one, so FP1 and also for the linear model. So I'm going to do run. So it's fitting all the models. And the best fractional polynomial of figure two is, um, is here at the bottom. This is the, the, the one that actually was fitted by Stata in the output here. Okay. Um, the powers are 0.5 and 3. So it's using transformation for the variables the systolic of square root of systolic and systolic uh, cube systolic to the power of three um, and now we will want to compare this with fp1 um, and also with the, the linear model um, and we can do this with with basically three criteria with this hypothesis test that's presented in the result that that, com that uh, compares the, the all, all these models with the reference model that is the fp2 okay we can also use the, the AIC criteria or the BIC criteria. Okay, so we have three ways of, of, of looking, of deciding which model we want to choose. Okay, so let's start here with hypothesis test um, criteria. Uh, and what this result shows me is the comparison between FP1, so fractional polynomial of degree one, with fractional polynomial of degree two. Two. And the null hypothesis is that the both models are equivalent in terms of deviance. So I have a, um, a high value for the p-value, which means that there's no evidence that uh, M2 is superior to M1 or FP2 is superior to FP1 um, in terms of deviance. Okay, the data does not uh, reject the null hypothesis, um, so there's no evidence against it. So I'll, I'll I'll accept that the two models are equivalent in terms of deviance. And because they are equivalent, I will probably choose the FP1 given that it's less complex. Okay, so this would be the first criteria uh, to use. And if I would stick to it now, I would like to compare FP1 with the linear model. So I know that FP1, um, I, don't, I don't need to go one step further to the, to the FP2. FP1, maybe it's enough, but I would like to compare FP1 with uh, the linear model. And I don't have that test here because this test corresponds to the linear model compared, compared to the FP2. 
Okay, so if I'll, I'll stay with this, with, with this criteria for now and I'll come back to the other one. So uh, what I want to do is to rerun uh, the fractional polynomial. So fractional polynomials here. Uh, but now I'll restrict that the maximum dimension of the fractional polynomial is, is 1. Um, and if I run straight away, I'll get an error. Okay, and the reason for that is that the, the auxiliary variables that are created for the fractional polynomials were already created in the previous command. So I have to uh, run the, 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 the new fractional polynomial command with added replace, so the, the, the variables that were created uh, before are replaced, okay? So uh, exactly the same thing, but with replace added to the command, and if I rerun, this should be fine, okay? So I have here the result for FP1, and using the same criteria, I'm now comparing FP1 with the linear model, and what this p-value tells me, which is a bit lo uh, um, low, uh, is that the data provides evidence against the null hypothesis, meaning that the data provides evidence against the two models being the same. And um, this is the same thing as saying that uh, M1 seems to fit better than, than the linear model, okay? Because this is uh, small. So the model, according to this criteria, the model with one over systolic, that's what this power means of minus one, would fit better than the linear model, okay? So this would be the first criteria, and here would be the final model uh, with the, the effect of uh, systolic. And you can see that uh, the odds ratio is uh, humongous, and this most likely is due to the, uh, to the unit um, used for systolic. Um, we're not really interested in interpreting this for now, we're just looking at the exercise from the point of view, the point of view of selecting the, the, the model. Okay, so if I prefer to use AIC or the BIC criteria, uh, what I had to do um, was to, I'll start again with the same command, so I'm fitting a dimension 2 polynomial, fractional polynomial, to the model, I have to add now the replace, again for the same reason, because the auxiliary variables were created. So I'm running the FP2, so I get the, the result as above, right, so this was the result that I had above, um, and I can now ask for the AIC of this model with the command stat uh, IC, okay, this will give me the AIC and BIC for the last model fitted, which is going to be the FP2. I'm going to run this. Okay, so I have here the AIC and BIC, and I'm going to produce the three BICs for FP, uh, FP2, which is this one. I'm going to do this for the F, FP1, so I'm going to run the fractional polynomial with the dimension 1 here. I cannot forget to put replace. So FP just for just with the one dimension, and I'm going to ask for the AIC of this model. That I see, and I'm going to run the um, linear effect model. So the logistic uh, for stay with systolic um, as a linear effect, and I'll ask the AIC for this model again, okay? So I now can compare the three AICs of the, 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 the different mod, uh, models. And the linear one is the one with the higher AIC, so it's uh, the one that fits worse to the data. Uh, and then I have FP1, uh, sorry, FP2 here and FP1 here. Uh, FP2, actually, it's a bit smaller, but virtually the same thing as FP1. There's less than one point of difference between the, the, the two models. So basically, this is saying that, you know, they are very similar, they are equivalent in terms of fitting. I would probably, given this result, 
Um, I'll probably stay with the FP1 because the model is is, uh, is more parsimonious than uh, the FP2. If we go to the criteria of BIC, again, the linear model will have the higher BIC, so this was this is the worst model according to this criteria, and the FP1 is, is uh, the best one. And the reason for this, again, is BIC penalizes um, has a he heavier uh, penalization for the complexity of the model, um, and that's why the FP1 uh, wins with the BIC. Okay, so basically um, both all the criteria, except for the IAC, that it's a bit dubious because uh, the, the lower IAC is in fact the, the FP2. But given all these results, I'll probably stay with or choose the systolic. Um, uh, with the fractional polynomial transformation of power minus one, so this is fitting. This is fitting um, the model with one over the systolic, and as I said before, this is the the result, and the, the units here is the units of one over systolic, and again this is so this is the reason why the the, the odds ratio. Um, it's not really interpretable, okay? So I, I should say something uh, a little bit more about this because when you have the odds ratio um, with the, the linear effect model, so this is in fact how much the odds increases per unit of systolic, okay? Uh, in this case, this is how much the odds increases per unit of 1 over systolic, which is meaningless, right? And in fact, if we want to come back to the to the unit of systolic, we know that the effect is it's nonlinear, so I cannot have one one single odds ratio uh, that that uh, um, describes the association between um, between systolic and uh, the probability of of uh, being discharged uh, death. Exactly because the effect is nonlinear. Okay. Last part of the exercise asks us to plot the fractional polynomial and compare it to the linear association. So I'm going to, to plot the uh, FP1 because that, that's the, the uh, fractional polynomial that we end up choosing. And I'll compare this with um, the predictions from a model with the linear effect of uh, systolic. Okay. So I'm, I'm going actually to clear these. You can clear the results just to have clean output um, and I'm going to clear this as well and I'm going to um, so rerun the FP1 the fractional polynomial I have it here so I'm just going to rerun this little bit so this is the last model that is loaded uh, the FP1 um, and now I'm going to store the predictions from this model, okay? And I can do this by coming here. Uh, if you already know the command, you can use it directly. Or just come here to predictions, and we want to predict probability. So we want to predict what, uh, uh, make predictions from the, the model in terms of probability of dying. Um, and I'm going to do lunch. And the new variable is STA. This is the outcome underscore pred of the predicted, and let's call it FP1 from the this model of perfection polynomial one. Okay, so this is um, run, and now I'll run the linear model. Um, so it's just a not logistic logistic regression with a linear effect. A bit more precise in terms of what I'm running, so logistic STA with systolic, and uh, I'm going to ask again the prediction from now this last model, which is prediction, let's call it STA underscore pred underscore lean or linear um, coma P. Okay, so I've stored in this new variable the predictions from the linear model. And now I just have to plot these two things. So I can do two ways bar. I can. Um, I'll start by plotting 
STA, sorry, STA, variable STA, and the X variable is going to be the systolic. So this will produce just the scatter plot. It's not very useful. But I'm going to add a new plot that is going to be um, the predictions of the FP1 um, and the X axis is going to be the systolic. I can actually write this. So you see here the predictions from uh, the FP1. Okay. If you want to connect these lines, it's important to um, sort the data set um, by the variable systolic, otherwise the lines will be connected in a random order to different points. So actually we can sort this, the data set by C's, so just writing sort C's. And we can, instead of using the, the scatter, I'm going to put the line. So if I to submit, I'll get the line connected. Okay. And I'm going to add finally the third plot, which also can be a line, uh, but the prediction from the linear model versus systolic. And it can be aligned because it's already sorted by systolic, so there's no problem. Better get the right variable and accept and submit. And here we go. Okay, so this would be uh, the predictive um, effect of systolic or with linear model, and you can see here with the um, FP1 might be fitting better than the data. So the big difference is going to be really in the low values of the systolic. And that's it for exercise uh, number three.